this desolate house is all that remains of what was once a thriving neighborhood in a riverbank community in Cagayan de Oro in the Philippines. All other houses were completely wiped out in the 2011 floods caused by tropical storms in Dong. A lone survivor, Mr. Saturnino Zambrano, shows how high the water rose during the storm. He and his family are the only people remaining in the area because they have no means to move. Sindong took the lives of over 1,300 people, as this monument in the city center recalls. It exposed the vulnerability of the area's water infrastructure and highlighted the lack of resilience of the river catchment and the water supply infrastructure. Upstream, deforestation, monoculture, and slash and burn agriculture practices are just some activities that result in a downstream catchment that is extremely vulnerable to flooding. These problems are complex and intertwined. In general, Policies on logging, poaching, and mining are enforced only weekly, and agriculture is slowly creeping into forest lands. In the ancestral domains, the role of indigenous peoples as custodians of the forest is insufficiently valued. They have gathered traditional knowledge and environmental protection and conservation for centuries, yet their role in environmental planning is still limited. Also, there is an overall lack of understanding of the delicate balance that exists between land use upstream and its consequences for the downstream areas. If you look at the topography of our area, we really have a natural recipe for disaster. Upstream is where we have two headwaters that are really very steep and also deforested. So when we have strong rains, this surface water, it goes as a surface runoff down to the river and down to the city, which causes flooding. Bridge to Coast Rain to Tap is an ambitious project financed by the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs and six implementing partner organizations. The project aims to strengthen the resilience of not only the river catchment and the water distribution network, but also the resilience of vulnerable communities to heavy rainfall and flooding. This starts upstream where, with support from the project, three indigenous communities have agreed to reforest 150 hectares of eroded riverbanks. The project partners aim to encourage other funders to scale up tree planting to a level that will reduce flood risk downstream. The risk of flooding is also a constant threat to the operations of the Cagayan de Oro Water District or COWD. Their main booster pumping station was completely flooded during Sendong and again during Tropical Storm Vinta in December 2017. As a result, the population of Cagayan de Oro had no water for three weeks until everything had been restored. COWD is now receiving support from the Netherlands drinking water company, VEI, to address these issues and become more resilient to flooding. VEI also supports COWD to improve other parts of its operations, such as water safety and reducing leakage. The primary goal is to enhance COWD staff capacity to perform their work more effectively. This capacity building is achieved via multiple mechanisms such as trainings, workshops, and peer-to-peer -peer knowledge exchanges of Dutch and Filipino specialists. Here, Chris Ricks, a pump and metering expert from VEI is inspecting the location and condition of flow meters, which are necessary for accurate measurement of production and losses. COWD's operations are further strengthened via installation of improved GIS and hydraulic modeling software by one of the project's partner organizations, FRRL. Thousands of families that were displaced by Sendong have been relocated to areas like this one in Kamamanan, where they have rebuilt their lives. Although the local government has provided acceptable housing, a lot remains to be done. COWD and VEI are planning to supply each of these houses with safe water. 
And here, in a school a few miles away, the Philippines Red Cross, one of the partners in the project, is supporting local institutions to repair toilets and hand-washing facilities. An important element in their work is training a school sanitation committee to perform the maintenance of these facilities. Because of its complexity, the work plan for Reach to Coast Rain to Tap has been divided into five work packages. Inception and monitoring, reduced risk of flooding through integrated river basin management, climate resilient and improved management of water supply infrastructure, improved water sanitation and hygiene conditions in flood resettlement areas, and closure and documentation. Traditionally, integrated water resource management and wash and flood protection programs are not implemented into one and the same project. Reach the Coast Rain to Tap aims to do exactly that. By using the knowledge and expertise of all of its partners, the project aims to have a major impact on lives of the people of Cagayan de Oro in the years to come.